when the focus goes on what do I think right now? Do I have the right and proper thought about myself, the universe, uh, and everything? Uh, it, it creates such a chaos. That's, that's the source of mess. We have no idea how to resolve uh, ups and downs. And every one of us experience ups and downs, you know, sometimes happy, sometimes sad. And it seems that as we grow up, that's for sure what I learned from different examples and books that I read and just the general vibe is that I constantly need to fix myself. I constantly need to strive to have positive thoughts, emotions, sensations and get rid of everything about myself that I consider to be negative. Sounds familiar? Yeah. Okay. And it never works. <laughs> that's the thing it never works you do all the things that you do whether spiritual non-spiritual lots and lots of thinking as we know many people uh, in the West especially like to think even when in Goa in vacation we think oh I shouldn't think I'm in Goa but still the thinking follows us even to the beach and the sunset and and the beauty of the nature and the parties still thinking so annoying right I paid all this money to be in a vacation, <laughs> but my mind goes with me. So uh, maybe I should go back to the West or another country. Who knows? Bangkok, maybe? <laughs> Thailand? <laughs> I like India anyway. But uh, that, that's what I noticed, that I, it's a lot of looking at myself and trying to think, okay, oh, I shouldn't think so much, I shouldn't feel that. And, and really, that's where all the mess starts, people not knowing each one individually doesn't know the nature of our own mind, the nature of our own intelligence as the basis of true sanity, of true stability, peace, calm, even in the midst of highs, lows, challenges and in-betweens. And that's where actual solutions can be found. Now, when we are looking for the nature of mind in all kinds of effortful practices that describe us as flawed, and that at some point in the future we will be fixed by the grace of who know what, that's very confusing as well because we are always uh, feeling hopeless, waiting to achieve some kind of a special state in the future that uh, doesn't have anything to do with us. The, the point is that we need to strive and we need to effort and that's what we do in all kinds of practices and this is something that I've done for many years of my life. I've been lucky enough to meet the Balanced View training in an early stage of my life, but before that there was so much seeking, so much fixing of one, myself, trying to rearrange my display, the flow of my thoughts and emotions to a picture that I'll feel is right, and hopefully everyone around me will confirm the like button on Facebook. So I was waiting to reach that point, and of course I had positive moments, I had special states, I had amazing experiences, <laughs> but at the end of them there was like the fall back to the thinking, the emotions, the, the analyzing, and did I say thinking before? Oh yeah, thinking again. So yeah, you get the gist of it. And um, But there's a way out of that, and that's the, s the good news of Balanced View. There's a way for each one of us to recognize our innate perfection exactly as we are, even with our wackiest thoughts and emotions, even the dodgiest thoughts and emotions, the funkiest ones. They don't, descri they don't require any work, they don't require hoping that they will change. What we can recognize is the stability that is present inseparably from whatever ap that appears. You woke up in the morning with a happy thought, smiley, great. You woke up in the morning with negative thoughts, perfect. That's your great opportunity to recognize this stability. And you woke up somewhere in between, incredible. The same opportunity lies there. And to know that very directly, we need to know, first of all, what's, what, what the hell is going on here? Why, why am I changing so much? Why are my thoughts and emotions are so unpredictable? Always changing. Did you notice like from morning till now how many thoughts and emotions were changing? Wow, I love being here. Oh, what the hell am I doing here? Oh, I love the people that I'm with. Oh, I don't want to be with them. 
I should go to Humpy or something like that. You know, constantly looking for the next good experience that will make us happy forever. It might be in the partner that we will find in Humpy <laughs> and the one that we are going away from in Goa. You know, that's where our happiness lies. But you see the same, same uh, emphasis on thoughts and emotions continues, but still we are always seeking and searching. The way out of it is to recognize the basis of all of that incredible display <laughs> that constantly changes. And to do that very directly, s just stop thinking for a moment. What remains? Openness, alertness, cognizance, the power to know. This is open intelligence, what's looking through your eyes, what's always present and does not depend on what you're thinking or feeling. This is open intelligence, again, the power to know, the stable basis. From which then, after the moment of stopping thinking and recognizing open intelligence, the next thoughts flow on by. Thoughts, emotions, sensations, what we call in balanced view, data or data streams. Whether you have any kind of data stream or not, whether you're thinking or not, open intelligence is at, is at the basis. And you can recognize it for short moments, repeated many times, until the instinctive recognition of open intelligence becomes obvious at all times. Not just in happy states, listen to that, but at all times, when you really, really need it. In the arguments, when you wake up with uh, all kinds of emotions, memories about the past, that's where we need the relief and that's where we want the stability to be obvious. And that can be easily tapped into by short moments of open intelligence many times basically relying on this stable ground rather than investing all of our precious energy, time, resources into the ever-changing display, like trying to build cloud castles and capture them or trying to move one part of space to this part of space, assuming that we'll, it will improve space. That can be a lifelong commitment and investment, but nothing happens. Nothing happens to space. Nothing happens to our own intelligence. What happens? We just feel more exhausted. We feel that we need to really work on ourselves and constantly analyze ourselves. When I met the Balanced View training, I was so addicted to thinking about everything. And I came to, after my first open meeting, I or one of the first open meetings, I came to the trainers and I said, are you sure? Now that we are just the two of us here, not all the people around, are you sure that really you don't need to think about your thoughts and emotions all day long in order to be happy? And the trainer just smiled at me with this great, brilliant smile that I will never forget. And she just said, no, not really. She didn't say more. Uh, she kept me intrigued. And I was like, OK, cool, interesting. I don't believe it, but I'm going to try it and see if if that's really something that can work even for someone like me. And then I tried and tested the short moments. And I found, to my great surprise, that I woke up in the morning like some of you uh, on this side of the space and this side that woke up with negative thoughts. I woke up with a syndrome that is called morning depression, something that I knew very well from before. And I saw suddenly my option there. I can invest in describing that. Why? Who? When? How many times? Why me? Why? Wh why? You know, I'm so good. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really trying well. well. Why, why again? One option that leads to more despair. Okay. <laughs> the second option was to actually rely on open intelligence, the power to know and allow the data stream, morning depression in my case, to be as it is. And that's why I saw that the data stream, in my instinctive recognition, not as an idea, self-releases like a line drawn in water. Depression. Sadness. Fear of rejection, in any language that you want. Yeah. Nothing remains. Just brightness availability. So you see, it's not about ignoring our emotions or thoughts or anything like that, but recognizing their stable nature 
inseparable. Yeah, all, everything that appears is inseparable from open intelligence, like the color blue in the sky, like fire and heat. Not two things, like many, many things and things that I learned were about like being aware and watching my thoughts and emotions, like a cat watching a mouse and being ready to pounce on the bad ones and catch them. So being in some kind of a remote, distant, cut-off state of awareness that somehow observes all of these thoughts and emotions and waiting for the right ones to appear. That, that, that leads to disconnect and it leads to such great neutralization of our potent beneficial energy that, it o o that is always available, always on. And that's what you can recognize in short moments many times. And the balance view training, obviously the practice is amazing and you can try it right now. Even if you like, well, just relax for a short moment. Rest body and mind for a short moment. It feels good. It feels really good. Oh, it's so good. And you can repeat it whenever you remember naturally. It's not an effortful practice that you like put yourself in the corner and try to reach to a state in the next half an hour, an hour, or million lifetimes. Just the spontaneity of this here and now. The balance view training with a complete system of support, trainings, instructions, trainers, provides the, the greatest tools that are available to make it obvious in our everyday life. Because the practice alone, like I said, is great, but it's not enough. Because what we've learned before is so, the, the reification, the giving an independent nature to our thoughts and emotion, it's heavy duty stuff. It's like intense I, and it's insane. It's so unreal. So many belief systems and assumptions along the way can keep us distracted from enjoying the simplicity of each moment. And that's where the balance view training comes about and really provides um, the ability and the tools to see it in our, alive in our own direct experience, moment to moment, and to gain complete confidence and assurance in that. And that's my experience, and that's the experience of many ordinary uh, people around the world that have been looking for a long time and seeking for this simplicity that they can implement in everyday life, wherever they are. And now they can share results that are profound, you know, clarity in every moment, stability regardless of thoughts and emotions and that's where the change starts you can project to the hopelessness and of the world and of course i can relate to that but what can i do now that will empower me for the benefit of all but the self project just ends the endless seeking just ends what can i do with all of this energy to actually be of benefit to all and provide solutions rather than playing the game of victimhood because the politicians are doing what they're doing. That's the true place of empowerment. And that's what you find as you allow yourself the, the gift of a short moment and all of the support that is gift given here.